Hyundai channel, welcome to our live video series. Today we're going to take a look at the 2021 Kia Sorento SX and this is the one with the burgundy interior. So we're going to take a look at that in depth and up close. Uh, not only are we going to show you the interior, we're going to talk about this car, all the features because that's what we do here. We go really in depth. So for those of you joining us for the very first time, we are doing this live, which means we're going to have a live audience commenting on this whole video the whole time. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow those people to ask their questions and you can ask the questions as well. So if you want to join us live, let me show you how to do that right now. If you are with us and you're not live and you just want to get to the content of this video, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark and that's what we'll get going on the content. So those of you that want to know how to join us, let me show you how to do that right now. All right. If you're on our YouTube page, you just simply go to uh, our page at two o'clock exactly uh, Eastern time. So two o'clock, you can see right there, it says two o'clock right now. We're gonna hit refresh or load up the page exactly at two o'clock and you're going to see our live video. It's right there on the home page. It's gonna say live right there. So we're gonna click into that. While we're clicking into that, we're gonna watch an ad, only you're gonna watch me instead. Uh, real quickly, if you're looking to buy this car or a Hyundai vehicle, Give, us a, give me a call here or connect with me here at Brantford Kia. If you're in Ontario, we can help you out. Uh, I can be reached. Uh, as soon as this video is posted, I'll put a link in the description of how to connect with me and I can help you out and I will give you people that will treat you the way I would treat you. So these are people I work with and they will treat you well. And uh, yeah, I guess that's enough of a pitch. All right, the ad is done. Those of you joining, uh, you can see there's a bunch of comments coming in already. That's our regulars saying hello to each other and uh, feel free to jump in there. If you're the first time here, ask a question. Why not? It'll be fun. Uh, we'll sit there, we'll set a like goal at some point. So those of you that are watching right now, feel free to hit the like button. Uh, so what's going on? So we've got a lot of carnivals in stock right now, a few of them. We're waiting for the LX and LX Plus and the SX to show. All of those should be here hopefully this week. You never know with carnivals. Uh, it's been an interesting uh, battle trying to get them all here on time. But when they show up, we're gonna get them in here in the video bay. Uh, specifically the SX, I'd like to do a comparison of that to the Kia Telluride because you've got two sort of top level eight passenger vehicles. I guess the SX would be a seven passenger at that point. Um, but yeah, uh, just very interesting comparison I think there. So we'll do that as soon as we can. Uh, but of course we'll do just the SX on its own. It's a pretty cool car. Uh, some of you have been asking about the Santa Cruz. The Santa Cruz is coming. As soon as I have more in-depth information, which I assume can come soon, I will get that to you. If you wanna pre-order Santa Cruz, you can do that today. If you live in Ontario, connect with me. I will get you on the pre-order list. I will connect you up with the people that will help you get through that. Um, so we can do that for you. So all that's coming up. I got 15 seconds before we start here. There's 24 of you on. Eight of you have said, yes, this is totally worth a like. The rest of you said, nope, I'm gonna make you earn it. If I can earn it, or if you wanna help us out, just do something nice for me. Just hit that like button for me. That would really help us out. We're going to set a goal of probably about 60 or so today. Uh, try to get the 60 likes if we can. So there we go. All right. Somebody said EV6 anytime soon. Uh, no, not anytime real soon. All right, here we go. We are three minutes in. We're going to talk about the 2021 Kia Sorento SX. So this is a full in-depth review of this car. Now, maybe you've said we've done this before. We have. Uh, we'll show you the interior. We'll start with there uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but we're going to talk about a few of the little differences that you see in this car over some of the other trim lines. And uh, we'll first of all talk about where it is in the price point. The burgundy leather is not an extra cost over the regular leather, so it's just black or burgundy. Uh, Sorrento comes in all kinds of trims. So you got the LX Plus down at the bottom there, $33,995. You move up to the LX Premium, the X Line. The X Line in Canada is different than in the US, it is a separate trim line. That's about a one inch lift, two inch lift or so. Uh, six passengers from here on, and you get the four turbo. Now, one thing I wanna point out, four cylinder, 191 horsepower, four turbo, 281 and 311 foot pounds of torque. Way more powerful engine. And highway fuel efficiency here, it goes down. Higher is, low, is, low, is worse in Canada. 11.1 .1 liters per 100 kilometers used, but, uh, sorry, city fuel efficiency down. Highway fuel efficiency is better. So that's 8.4 liters per 100 kilometers. We're gonna go right to the end. This is where we're at today. So if you get that turbo engine, you have a lot more power, 3,500 uh, pounds of towing cap capability, and you have better highway fuel efficiency. So if you're driving on the highway, this is the one you want. You also have an eight-speed dual clutch transmission instead of an eight-speed traditional transmission. Uh, we might look under the hood today, but today we're gonna focus a lot more on the interior of the car. So we'll get there in just a second. Um, I am gonna sit in the third row seat. So if you're curious about sizing of front, middle, and third row seats, we'll get to that as well. A couple things I want to point out. Some of you asked about a, a night sky, nightfall edition of this car. It doesn't have one 
And I'm gonna be kind of blunt, I don't think it needs one. When you look at this car, the chrome trim here is kind of a darker color up along here on the lower trim levels. This is more of a silver color, but it is a dark trim color. If you look at the top, you've got the roof rack, which is black. We'll talk about that in just a second. You've got the wheels that are black. Down here, we've got the piano trim black and across the grill out front here. Whoops, just walked into the wall. Uh, if you look across the grill there, again, a lot of black there. Really, other than the tinted logos, you're very similar to the Telluride Night Sky or Nightfall Edition of the United States. Uh, so people ask why there isn't a Night Sky Edition, because frankly, you would just tint the logos and that would be basically the same package. Um, so that's why there's not. And uh, at this point, I don't have, haven't heard of any plans and I don't expect that. All right, let's take a look inside. One thing I want to point, I mentioned the roof rail up top. You guys know I'm a kayaker, I like to be out in the outdoors. The kayak rails used to have sort of a cap here and then this back piece was separate. And the same thing on the front. Now it's all a single piece. So again, if you're like me, you take your kayaks or maybe you've got large ski box or something like that, you can really separate um, the crossbars on this. And that makes it for uh, just the ability to carry some longer items really securely, which is kind of nice. All right, gonna show you the key real quick. As I do that, we'll talk about some UVO intelligence features and then we'll jump right in. Here is the key. This is the key now. Uh, somebody says, one of the best headlight designs I've seen. You know what? We'll show the headlights as well in this video. This is the key we have. Uh, this is the new key. All the buttons are in a harder to accidentally hit spot. It used to be all the way across here on the old Sorrentos. Uh, now they're in a smaller spot, which I think is better. Very easy to find without looking at what's what. And uh, you do have a remote start there on the key fob. Now, speaking of remote start, you also have uh, remote start on your cell phone with this car with uh, UVO Intelligence. The UVO Intelligence in this car is the best we've seen yet. Uh, we have a video on our channel talking about you can take pictures with your car. Uh, it's a Kia class that we did and you can see this car has cameras in the mirrors that look down, has cameras out the um, front, out the back and you can take pictures, send them to your phone wherever your car is. So you can be sitting there in the shopping mall and go, hey, let's take a picture of where the car is and you can see all the pictures of the car around you. So very cool. Uh, detail there. Somebody says, uh, Stinger Elite when Thunder Grey Red Interior. Oh yeah, we have Thunder Grey with Red Interiors coming. All right, let's look at this. Now, if you've seen our Stinger videos, you have seen a red interior. This is a burgundy interior. It's a different color and I'm going to tell you right off the bat what you're seeing and I want to say this really clearly. The red or burgundy level seats that you're seeing here do not look the exact same on my camera as they do to my eyes, which means it'll look a little different on yours. So you will have to come see it in person, but you've got a pretty good idea of what is what. Uh, it's not far off, but just because you're looking at colors on a screen, uh, you do not get to see the exact perfect representation. And you can see the color will change based on how light and dark everything is. Uh, but he will show you what's red, what's not, or what's maroon. And keep in mind the Kia Seltos will also be available for 2022, which is coming very soon, with a burgundy interior. They're referring to this as burgundy, which means it'll be the same color. All right, seats are some of the best in the business. Let's talk about them in the SX here. You have your typical adjustments here. Now this piece here, right there is where you're looking, and I'm going to press this button. It comes all the way in. If you are shorter, that works great. And really, these are just traditionally sized seats. If you're tall, this is where this makes a big difference. It comes all the way out, and it comes really just a long ways. Now, what I like about the Sorento, in Canada, which is where we film, when you get a, black, a brown Telluride, the seats are brown, the uh, plastic is brown, and it's just a lot of brown. It's, some people really like it. It's different than the United States. However, the Sorento here, you still have a lot of the black accents. One thing I didn't expect is the wheel. It just has a red trim, or again, maroon trim on the inside. And again, the camera's really picking it up differently, especially on that wheel, than it looks in person. So uh, if you like it or don't like it, save your judgment for when you see it in person. Uh, I've been told by our fashion people, this looks amazing. So uh, I have no fashion sense, and I just show you what it is and you guys form your own opinions, but the fashion people seem to really like a lot of this here. So, it's a nice quilted kind of look there. You've got perforations in there, they are functional. We'll talk about that in just one second. And uh, let's jump in and take a look at some of the technology in here. Again, we will be jumping in the rear seat. We will be jumping in the third or second row and third row seats. I'm just putting the seat to where I need it. All right, turning the car to the on position. This is watching the dash come to life. We have a digital dash here, so a 12.3 inch display screen. Kind of rare for Kia. The Telluride doesn't have it yet. 
The Stinger doesn't have it yet, despite a redesign, but the Sorrento does, so pretty cool. Uh, we also have it now in the Carnival, and in the Carnival you have a 12.3 inch screen over here. In the Sorrento you have a 10 and a quarter inch screen. It is the same software, and I will tell you that basically the Carnival, I think, sits a little further away from you, so it just looks a little bigger, but um, again, very similar view here. The idea is visually, if I have two eyes like a human, not one eye like a camera, visually this kind of blends into one. And you can see some cool little details here. They take, um, a good idea here is they take the, where's my drive mode button? There we go. The font there, if you see it, if I switch to smart mode, a different font, then sport mode, which is uh, actually the same font there, Eco mode changes the font on the letters, on the numbers, excuse me, and comfort mode again back there. So comfort, sm uh, smart, sorry, I'm going through them all, sport, and eco. So kind of cool use of the graphics there. Uh, I'll have to start the car up, but when I signal to the right, this becomes a camera view of my right or my left side uh, of the vehicle. This is the right side of the vehicle. It'll become a camera view. I can show you that in a second here. Actually, you know what? We'll just start it up and gas the place out for a quick second. Real quickly. There's my blind spot to the right. There's my blind spot to, or sorry, there's to the right, the other one's to the left. And that's how that works. I just, I am indoors right now, so I wanna make sure I'm keeping the, um, keeping the uh, vehicle itself. Does it have ambient lighting? It does not. Uh, not in the Sorrento here in Canada, it does not. So good question there. So coming over here, some people have said that this is a controversial look. I, at first I thought it was as well. I've very much gotten used to this. When I did a video on it and they upgraded my soul, I said, oh, this is a big change. And it's different in the EVs than it is here. Some of the things I didn't like, I wanted an EV. So this is your standard stereo now in most uh, Kia vehicles. Big 10 and quarter inch screen. You've got lots of things here. Some people who don't like this view, what I encourage you to do is hit the map button up here and you get a traditional map, which you can see right there. And then if you want, you tap this in and you can swipe down to whatever you want. What I like to do is keep it on the radio. If I turn the radio on for a second, we'll just turn it down. Uh, you can sort of see everything you wanna see on the radio. Now I have no service because I'm inside, but a lot of people like this view as a more traditional view than the artsy kind of view of the purple screen. But if you do this, it will stay in that uh, in that um, setting if you want. The other thing is if you got rear seat passengers, oops, yeah, you just go up to there. You can talk to them through that as well. Soul has ambient, but not for the Sorento. And yeah, that's right. The Soul has some of that ambient lighting, but the Sorento does not. So uh, some of you guys, I think um, that ambient lighting is more popular with some of you than we think. I think sometimes... Uh, Sometimes we underestimate it, sometimes we overestimate it. But anyways, there's a lot of options here. And again, if you want to view your radio instead in full screen, you can do your radio like this, and you can have the screen like that. And again, you can have your navigation up there like that. So some people looking for a little bit more traditional view can do that. You can see these radios are now pretty uh, high tech. Make sure you hit that Bose center point. It uh, helps make the sound a little bit better. There's a number of ways to improve the sound in this vehicle, but it is a Bose audio, so you're starting with a pretty good space uh, right there. And again, this is sort of what your audio system looks like, so very well done. The passenger talk that you saw earlier, I should probably just point out what that is. There's two buttons here. Uh, passenger talk right here. Uh, what it does is basically the third row passengers, maybe they're sitting there and uh, they are having earphones in, or maybe they're just a long ways back, there's kids back there. What's going on right now is... The microphone in the car, which is up here, and I can hear myself echo, you probably can't. Um, I can hear that in the rear speakers. The rear speakers are picking up my voice, and it's pretty cool because you can just get people's attention who are in the rear of the vehicle. As soon as you hit the end, it's gone, and we're back to normal there. So you also have quiet mode, same sort of idea, but opposite. So what it does is it turns off the rear speakers and only the front speakers will have noise. What I like it for is, um, well, a lot of people say, hey, I can let the kids in the back um, sleep. Sure. But what I like it for is kids who have earbuds in maybe, or passengers who have earbuds in, listen to their own music. You're not putting your music on them. You're just having it out front here. So you've got some cool little things that just kind of work well. When you start putting seven people in the car, or six people in the car in this case, uh, you'll have different tastes on things. And this is just sort of some nice features there that can uh, give you what you need. A lot of times I point this out in a video and every time it sort of seems to be a wow factor thing. Oh, it doesn't work right now. Doppler radar, if I wasn't inside right now, you'd be able to see... Um, you know, some of the radar in the area, which is pretty cool. We can see traffic or fuel prices in the area. Maybe some of these will work. Yeah, some of them are loading. So there you go, fuel prices in the area, which is kind of nice to see. Um, not only do you have, but you can choose by your fuel type. You can choose your favorite stations. You can choose by brand of fuel, uh, sort by brand of fuel, that kind of thing. So lots of ways to see that kind of stuff. And that's all, again, standard in this car. 
All right, let's uh, throw the car in reverse for a quick second. When I throw in reverse, you can see here, if the wheel is turned a little bit, like it is right now, you can see it's just a little bit on an angle here, uh, the front wheels, if I back up, are going to turn a little bit Sorry, out this way. I couldn't Whoops. hear what Siri's talking to me. Uh, so the front wheels are going to turn a little bit out this way. If I turn the wheel more, which is hard to do, you can kind of see it turning a little bit, turn it the other way there. So it tells you not only where your rear of the vehicle is going to go, but also where the front is going to swing. You also have a very clear backup camera right there. When I put it in drive, it's not going to work right now, but if I was actually in drive, oh, it will work right now. There it is looking forward. So when you go forward, this is really nice because you can see things that I can't see from the drivers. You can see that grate in the ground there. Imagine that was a curb sticking up, right? Or the child's walking around a taller vehicle. You know, if a child's walking around the front of this vehicle, you really can't see them. But of course, with this camera, as soon as you go from reverse to drive, you have that view, both the 360 view and a camera right in front of you, which can help. And you can turn that on when you're slow speeds in a parking lot. Uh, just to make sure you're seeing everything as well. So really great camera system. If you're parallel parking, let's go back to reverse. Uh, you can put the cameras just on the sides there. This is left and right side of the vehicle. You can see exactly where the curb is. Back to drive again. And uh, same idea. I can look left and right side of the vehicle as well in there. So a lot that you can see. You can see exactly where your wheels are going to go or that's the standard view. So really great camera system in this car. They've improved this bit by bit over time. And the biggest improvement is the bigger screen. This, it's hard to say, you know, hard to show how big this is. But I mean, I mean, when you compare it to my hand, you've got just a big screen here for backup camera and a better screen here. We're not the first car company to do this. We just have a better screen view than it is. Uh, so that red wine seat is so player. <laughs> I cannot pull off the cool like you would say that, but yes, <laughs> it is. All right, let's turn this on for a second here. The lights in the room turned off, so let's just turn the lights in the vehicle on. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, automatic climate control, again, dual zone works really well. You've got a rear air conditioning as well, which you can turn on there as well if you want. You can adjust just the right side or just the left side. If you do just the right side here, it will unsync, and now I can adjust my own. So hot and cold, passenger and driver are both happy. Rear passengers are also comfortable. What I like the most, though, is right here. Not just rump roasters but ventilated seats as well. And these ventilated seats, a lot of car companies will throw air through the seat just enough to take the heat out of the seat. These ones, you gen genuinely feel the cool breeze coming through. So it comes through really nicely, uh, works really well. And I really like it there as well. So very nice. Again, not black seats, so maybe not quite as hot. Um, but yeah, really nice feature to have that ventilated seat turn on as well. All right, we mentioned the gear shift here. We're going to tap it this way. If you want to shift on your own, you can do that right here. Uh, or... You can throw it into a different gear by the paddle shifters up here. Let's turn that steering wheel straight again for a second. All right, so what we've got down here on the steering wheel while we're looking at it, cruise control right here. That's smart cruise control, so it will keep the distance in front of you. has highway drive assist as well, and you have lane keep and lane follow assist. Lane follow assist is this button again. Basically, lane centering technology. It's going to keep the car centered in the lane. It works really, really well. It takes all the stress out of a long drive. This car still has the shipping plastic on it. If you'll notice plastic in this car, and you'll also notice it's not clean, this car is going to be sold. It's going to be delivered very soon, but it has not been detailed yet. All right, let's take a look around again. Oh, Siri's talking to me again. All right, let's take a look around again. I want to show you this. We turned on the inside lights here, but you didn't see them. So a couple things with these interior lights. If I want to turn all the lights on, I just hit the switch. If I want to turn just my light on, I just tap it. Really cool feature where you don't have to just touch the rim or the glass and that light comes on, which is a very cool feature. Just feels very high end. Speaking of high end, you've got a real wow factor here in the um, panoramic roof. And it is a large, large panoramic roof. Camera always skews it a little bit, but it is a big, big roof, and that's just a nice thing to have. All right, take a look again at the interior here while, we, while we're here. We're going to go take questions for a second, and then we're going to jump in the back seat, the third row seat. We're going to talk about trunk space, and uh, I don't think I brought my teddy in here, so maybe we won't throw him, him in in this one. But you can see really nice seats here. The rear seats as well, they are also heated. Um, heat, heated seat bottom there, we'll talk about that. And very comfortable captain's chairs, and again, there's that third row seat folded down. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, do me a favor, guys. 47 people are on. 48 people are on right now. 28 people hit the like button. We were going to aim for 60 likes. It's a big goal. Uh, we're only about halfway there. So if you guys want to hit that like button for me, that would help. We'll see if we can get there. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. Uh, one thing that people are talking about is uh, memory seats. I seem to forget to point them out sometimes. They are available here on our SX model. So just so you know, we mentioned the Bose Audio as well, and it is also there. All right, I'm going to turn the car off. I'm going to put the seat back to where I need it so that when I jump in here again, 
it's all good. It moves back when I turn the car off. We can show you technology. We've done a technology video of this car, but we'll show you some more in a second. I'm gonna walk backwards to the light sensor. There we go, light turns on. All right, let's see if there's any questions that we should answer here. Okay, I wish it had a black headliner and ambient lighting. Yeah, a black headliner we showed the other day in the Elantra N line. Uh, this one does not have that. You can get that in the, um, oh, maybe not. I thought you could get it in the Telluride, but I'm not sure if the Night Sky has that. I don't think it does. Okay, let's keep going through here. Price point. We did show price point on this car earlier. It is $47,495 MSRP in Canada. So, good old pee in your pants feeling. Is that what somebody says about the heated seats or the ventilated seats? That's funny. Love the color of the seats. Yes, that red wine seat is so, oh yeah, we talked about that. I had tried to pull off the cool and I couldn't do it. Color reflection is spot on. I can tell it's a Bordeaux red, like red wine colored interior and the red of the steering wheel is slick. So there you go. It looks like you guys are happy with the color reproduction. Sometimes it's not always perfect on camera. So there we go. How many speakers? I believe it's 10 or 12. That's a good question. How do I feel about the huge rooftop? Oh, hold on. I missed that question. I'll come back to it in a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Are, there, are they leather or pleather? They are real leather. So real leather seats. And let's go down to the last question. How do you feel about those huge rooftop? Do you like them? Huge rooftop, what? The rooftop, the roof uh, centers? I love them. Hi, right, what's the length of the cargo space for the second and third row down? You know what? I don't have my tape measure with you, with me, but we can take a look at some of that here in a second. Maybe I'll just hop in and show you. All right, let's jump in the rear seat. So here's what I'm gonna be able to do, just so you know where we're heading the next 10 minutes. Gonna jump in the middle row seats, gonna jump in the third row seats. Uh, I wanna show you headlighting and lighting overall in this car. Uh, if you wanna look at some cargo space, we can try to play with that as well. And we'll take your questions. So we're gonna go to 30 minutes. And if we go longer than 30 minutes, we're just taking your questions. Maybe we'll take a few off topic questions at that point as well. Still looking for those 60 likes from the 50 people that are on right now. Um, you know, we're at about 35, so 36, thank you. I love the contrast of the white and the gloss black. You know what, so do I. That's one thing that this car in person, it looks really sharp. This gloss black never films well. Uh, but this car in person looks pretty sharp with that gloss black and white. It's probably a color combination that I would buy myself. Although there are some cool colors here. The really nice blue that's bright blue. All right, a lot of things to show you here. Kia's back seats are really good. Um, not a lot of manufacturers focus the same amount of attention on the rear seats. So again, we've got those heated rear seats back here. The car's not on, so these won't light up, but you can hit that right there. Cup holder in the door there, as well as, um, actually, no, this one doesn't have it in the center row because there is no center row. Again, maybe this isn't working. Somebody says no ugly chrome. Yeah, that's for talking about the outside. Uh, so again, this looks a little more orangey to me than in person. It's very much a, more of a red wine. Again, it's called burgundy, certainly looking orange here in person. Again, uh, orangey brownish as opposed to red. And that's just some of the lighting that's in this car. So let's jump in here for a second. One thing I want to point out, when you get in the back seat here, these captain's chairs, ultimate comfort. I've got great headroom here with the sunroof. Even without the sunroof, I've got good headroom. Uh, I can tilt a long ways back. I can sit way forward and upright. Uh, perfectly comfortable in the upright position, but again, I like to recline a little bit more than that. Uh, Legroom is just silly. I mean, it's just immense, right? So take a look down here. Oh, come on. Sorry, wrong way with the camera. There we go. All right, take a look here. My legs are flush on the seat. I've got just tons and tons of room. Again, I am a six footer sitting behind a six footer. So if you need kids to have some space or somebody in rear seat passengers to have some space, you're just gonna have a lot back here. All right, couple things I wanna talk about really quickly. Technology, let's take a look. Uh, I'll try to get my hand out of the way there or the, hand, the mount. 12 volt regular plug, USB plug. Now you're saying, wait a second, I need more than that one USB plug for my rear seat passengers. No problem. The back of the passenger seat and the back of the driver's seat also have a USB plug here. You can stick your stuff back here. You can also stick your, what I say, your electronic devices back here. I like that because you can throw cords out the top or you can run them out the side. That's pretty helpful there. You've got vents back here as well. Speaking of vents and pockets for technology, throw your cell phone in the side netted pocket right on the side of the seat. So I'll try to get that in a separate shot here. Um, it is black netted pocket on these burgundy seats. On the black seats, you kind of blend them in. Uh, but again, that nice netted pocket, perfect for a cell phone. Now, keep in mind your, uh, your information, your infotainment center right there, it can pair two phones at a time. So your driver's gonna have their phone paired for the cell phone as well as for music. And another phone can be paired at the same time for music only. So when you have someone sitting back here, their phone's plugged in right there. Maybe it's sitting down here in the side pocket. They can play their music 
from their phone in the vehicle. Again, Bose Audio. You've got these little retractable screens. I don't know if you can see that there, but that gives you a nice uh, sort of extra little bit of shade for the passenger. And it's pretty cool the way they tuck into the door. If you've never seen these before, maybe you have. If you watch our videos, you have. Uh, but they just come in and out of there really easily. They clip up very simply. I just did that left-handed, almost without looking. And uh, so again, really simple, really smart, really you know luxurious feel. So again, a lot of room here in the back. Now, what we're gonna do is go passenger side and we're gonna jump in over there and to the third row seats. But before we jump into the third row seats, we need to put up the third row seats. So let's just take a peek here. Normally when I measure cargo capacity, uh, what I do is I take my teddy bear. Teddy bear's not with me today, so we'll use something else. All right, a couple ways to open the trunk here. You can see a hand on the remote here. I've got the button, I can hold that down and I will use that way today. I could also tap the rear button, which is right underneath the E in the Sorento, uh, or I can uh, approach the vehicle with a smart trunk, stand there for a few seconds, the lights will blink five times in three seconds and it will open on its own. We did a trunk and tailgate features video on that earlier, but today I'm just gonna open it like this. It is a powered trunk. Hold that down for a second. Lights blink, it pops open. And you can set that height from both in the dash as well as uh, from the back here. One thing I really like on the Sorento that they haven't put in many of our other vehicles, including the new 2022 Carnival doesn't have this feature, although it may have it on the SX, we haven't tried it. This is just to shut the trunk. This one is to close and lock the trunk. Now, why is this important? Well, again, the key fob that I have today is in my pocket. I never have to take that key fob out. So with it never having to come out of my pocket or purse or whatever, when you normally, when you lock, close the trunk, you'd have to close the trunk, walk along to the side of the vehicle and touch the button on the door to lock everything up. Now what you do when you're leaving the vehicle, you just hit the lock button instead of just the, so you hit the lock button instead of just the close button, the lock button closes it and locks the entire vehicle. All right, real quickly back here, good trunk space here with the seats down. You're gonna have a little bit less. This is not a minivan with the seats up, but it is still pretty good space back here. You've got a lot of underfloor storage here and uh, at least on the one side. So let's put these seats up for a second. It's very easy to pull them up. First of all, if you wanna put the other seats down, I'll show you that as well. Uh, actually, no, they come from the front side, so excuse me. Uh, you've got the vents back here. You've got, oh yeah, there we go. There's your second row to fold your second row down, which we'll do in a second. And there's your 12 volt port and your, like I said, your air conditioning there, cup holders back here. And if you didn't notice yet, there's a USB port here as well. So every seat in the car has at least one USB port. Some of them have more. Gonna pull this up like that. Simple, simple, put the headrest up. I'm gonna take these mats out for a second just so I can work with one hand here as well. We'll put them both up and I will climb in behind these seats. Now, I have left that seat back all the way. It could move forward all the way, but we're gonna sit behind it either way, as it is. All right, right here, a couple ways to get in. There's a button down there. And if I'm in the back seat, there's a button up top here. What we're gonna do is move this one forward just by pressing this button. Check this out. Press it like that. Sounds kind of electronic. Again, that passenger seat could be forward. It's actually a long ways back, but that's okay. I can still work around this. I'm six feet tall. Watch how easy it is for me to climb in the back here. All right, climbing in. I'm over, I'm back. I'm down, and how am I doing for headroom? I'm okay. So, what is it like back here? Well, let's just go and make it more difficult for myself. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Jump over here. Now, I'm sitting behind myself. So remember, the driver, I had all kinds of legroom when I sat behind the driver's seat in this middle row seat. All of that legroom was like, what was it, eight or 12 inches almost of legroom? I could use a little bit more. Right now, I am tucked behind that seat. Even with the middle row seat all the way back, I fit back here. Headroom's fine, but here's what's not comfortable. My legs are a little bit up high. This is a temporary seat for an adult. It's not something an adult's gonna be in there super comfortable. If you need a ton of room, go for the Carnival. If you need more room, Carnival, tell your ride, both gonna have more room, but you can totally take an adult back here. You know, short trips, not a problem. I could fit back here across town, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, I could hang out back here. After that, I'm gonna get a little tired. All right, so here's the thing. We're gonna put the seats down for a second. Um, you guys are doing me a favor. 75 of you are on right now. We were gonna go for 60 likes. Not even all of you have to hit the like button right now, but if everybody on hits it, there's 80 people on now. If everybody hits the like button, that would really help me out. Uh, also, I'm in the back of the car for you. All right, so we're gonna jump out here. You can see there's a space to get out here. Again, this seat could move more forward, but it's not. I'm gonna put it back. Easy to get out. And you can see our dirty floor there. And here I am. So we're gonna put this seat back a little bit. I am gonna move the passenger seat forward. I'm gonna cheat a little bit because that passenger seat's a little far back. So I'm gonna fold the seats down for you, 
show you how easy that is. Powered seat here with a lumbar. I should show that as well. On the SX, you have that lumbar support. Whoops, just hit the camera. So again, a lot of people have that, uh, expect to see that lumbar in the driver's seat, not necessarily on the passenger seat, so there we go. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are not hitting that leg, but I'm really having to earn it today. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw the seats down because you asked us to do it. It's pretty simple. Usually I need two hands, but I'm gonna try to do it with one. Fold that, pull that down. Pretty simple. Pull this, headrest goes down, plop it down, there we go. Both those seats are down. The only thing I didn't do is I let this fly when I could have just Velcroed it back in there. Now what we're gonna do is, over here, second row seat. Left side and right side. I'm gonna hit those two buttons there. So can I get them both in the shot? Well, maybe, we'll do right side first. Right side, boom, seat folds flat. See how easy that was? Left side, same thing. I'm gonna touch that button, boom, seat folds flat. Oops, just ran into, looks, oh, you know what the thing was? I had the armrest up. The armrest up provides a little tiny bit of resistance. So, um, just two fingers here. Yeah, close it right down. So the seat's flat, sure they are. Now somebody said, how long is it here? Um, since I don't have my teddy bear, we're gonna do the Peter test. And if this doesn't earn a like from you guys, I don't know what will. Somebody always asks, can I sleep in this car? That seems to be a popular thing. So here I am. I am happily laying down. My head is still, you know, removed from the, um, from the seat, the driver's seat. Again, where I had it set. Flip around the other side. There's my pretty looking shoes and they are well inside the vehicle. Can you sleep in the new Sorento? If you're six feet tall, no problem. You can share it with a friend. The only thing is um, you do have that gap in here in the middle. I can't believe this isn't getting likes. This should get more likes for me laying in a car. All right, there we go. We're 31 minutes into this video. I am crawling in and out of the car. Whoop. There we go, having some trouble with the camera there. All right, Peter deserves more likes, they say. All right, we hit 51 likes. Okay, so I'm gonna go jump back, take your questions again. And uh, if you have questions, we'll go through there. Somebody's from Maine, that's pretty cool. Okay, does this car have three climate control zones? Sort of, it has the dual zone climate control and the rear air conditioning. So that's a great question, uh, sort of does. Does it have the four cylinder turbo? Yes, it does. Uh, good day, I really like the way you display your and your upbeat way of doing info on vehicles. Thank you. That was actually very nice to read because somebody was criticizing me for doing videos in my own style. Um, however, they've been on since 2014 and have never made a single video on YouTube. So I always enjoy hearing those. Here's how you should have done it better, but I've never made a video in my life. Uh, my dog Luna is a great, okay. That's too bad, okay. Okay, somebody said I got a like from them. All right, there we go. So I don't see a ton of questions here. We can leave it here or we can go through. I'll just give you a chance. Uh, what engine, well, what's the engine like? That is a good question. That's a very valid question. The engine on this car is fantastic. Two things I think I wanna point out on this car. Three things. When you get in, if you can get the panoramic sunroof, do it. If you can spring for the 2.5 liter turbo, which is what's in this car, it's 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo. Uh, if you can spring for that, get it. It's gonna get you better highway fuel efficiency. It's very fun to drive. It's very powerful. 311 foot pounds of torque. It's the, it's the um, K5 GT engine that people talk about. It's a very powerful engine. It's the Stinger four cylinder engine. We don't have the Stinger four cylinder in Canada, but it's very, very torquey. So that's an excellent engine to have in this car. Um, and it's very good to drive. And then the third thing I wanna point out is the ride on this car is phenomenal. Uh, it is very comfortable. Somebody says it's all wheel drive. Yes, every car, every Sorento in Canada is all wheel drive. But the ride on this car, for some reason, just kind of magic carpet smooths out those ripples in the road. It's excellent as that. How fast does the rear hatch open take? Okay, well, we'll shut it down. Um, it is available in multiple speeds. This is the faster of the two speeds. So how fast? I don't know. You can ready, start, go now. Oh, hold on. There you go. So that's how fast it is. Again, you can set the height, you can slow it down if you want. Um, somebody else asked a good question in here. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it all wheel drive? Uh, does the vehicle come as a hybrid? Not yet. How loud is the HVAC system? Great question. Let's just show you really quickly. Oh, don't wanna look at me. Nobody wants to look at me. HVAC system, I'll show you. I'm still battling for my last six likes. We're gonna have 400, 500 plus people on this video and I'm looking for 60 likes in this video. So six of you, five of you could really help me out right now. All right, are the win windows dual pane noise canceling? Not dual pane, but they are um, insulated here. Somebody said, is the climate system noisy? Well, this is a cool thing about it. If I turn it on auto and I have the three uh, buttons up like that, the fan will go as high as the full speed. If I want it to stay quieter, but still reach the same temperature, I can do that. The fans turn much, much quieter. 
and it'll take longer to reach the temperature, but it will, um, it will reach that temperature automatically. You never have to make any adjustments. So, uh, yeah, if, it, if the fan speed is too noisy for you, you can turn that down while still keeping it on the auto setting. So that's pretty cool right there. And uh, so there's a couple other questions I'll try to get to here. We got 90 people on, so we got a lot of people jumped on late. If you have a question, feel free to ask it. We're about to hang up unless there are questions here, uh, and then we'll stay on if you want them. So we're still searching for 60 likes. Man, it's been tough today. 88 people on, 57 people said sure. 88 people live. We're gonna have four, five, 600 people on this, easy. Okay, uh, any windows dual pane? The windows aren't dual pane, but they are a um, thing. Can you run faster than this car in 30 meters? I used to be able to. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Can we see more of the car? Yeah, you just watch the beginning of the video. Uh, da, 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 da. Can I see the second row floor and third row floor so I can see the space? Uh, sure. I think I'm showing you what you're asking for here. Second row floor. Uh, we'll put the seat up. Third row floor, I don't think I can show you. Oh, this is a two-hand job. Uh-oh. Okay, bear with me for a second, guys. You're going to see my legs here. Second row floor right there. A lot of space. We have we showed me in here earlier, so if you missed that. Is there a spare tire and wheel? No. This one has an inflator kit, not a spare tire. So um, yeah, somebody says it's really luxurious looking. Again, color reproduction is not perfect at all today. Uh, so you have to see it in person, but it is a very nice thing. I do recommend this. How many miles per tank of gas? John, I'm in Canada. I don't know what a mile is. I know what kilometers are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kilometer. Let me show you the fuel mileage and you can do the con conversion here. Rated fuel economy, 11.1 in the city, 8.4 on the highway, 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers used. So uh, you use 9.9 .9 liters for every 100 kilometers. So there we go. All right, 103 people on, 59 likes. Uh, and that's all we've got. Does it have the smelly seat problem of the Palisade? No, that was a short-term Palisade issue. Never had that with key, issue, key cars. First of all, these cars are made in the United States as well. Palisade's made in Korea. This is made in the United States. So there we go. No spare tires, seriously. I'm serious, no spare tire. They've moved away from spare tires in many of these cars. There is an uh, inflator kit. So you do have an inflator. If you go camping, uh, the inflator kit has a pump. You can blow up your air mattress with it, but it does not have spare tire. All right, we are going to leave it right there, guys. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we got 103 people currently on, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. We are back with all kinds of stuff. We do this every single day at 2 o'clock uh, live, and if you can't watch live, you can watch afterwards. But hit the subscribe button. we got a lot more coming up. I'm trying to get a Palisade in here. Uh, I may have that as early as tomorrow. We're going to have new Kia Carnivals in here. Santa Cruz information is coming, so we'll have more of that as well. So that's all, folks. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again tomorrow.